All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. All right, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you to everyone who's been sitting here waiting joining us already we've got a b c mac uh opal archive ronnie parker david donnelly i just saw you recently that was awesome uh bumping into david in banbury when i was in england during uh well last week i got home so or this week i got home whatever i got home um today we've got daniel wheeze on the board we've got 69th blizzard ken got Lonnie and I, I think Mark might be uh, trundling on by and hey Tim Cobb last last in line with the comments so we're back into the death matches for this episode but we're, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel literally we've got 19 songs left in there which means there's going to be an odd number uh, which will make things interesting as we get through into round three but for now um, Ace Frehley you guys watching any of the press that he's doing to drum up interest uh, on on his album? I, I noticed one where he was mining for boogers yesterday, but um, I, I have not <laughs> really? had a chance to, um, to check to the out. Best of us. Yeah, it, it does. Sometimes you just forget you're <laughs> online, and you know you go fishing. Uh, <laughs> I, wa- I I watched the promo video he did for for you know kind of behind the scenes of the video. Uh, for for ten thousand volts, I thought it looked pretty cool, uh, well done and well edited mm. and professional and so on. So it was cool to see that it looked great. <coughs> so, but I guess the record company he is he has these days really back him up. Uh, he, he got a lot of help making things look cool. You know, everything from from videos to to uh, records to to the colors of the vinyl and everything so it seems like they are backing him up and i think that's cool yeah i mean it's it's awesome but he still has to do the put the effort in himself you know to film that stuff and he's promoting it which is nice so it it's really i need to catch up on a lot of stuff obviously i got back from england late tuesday and i've been absolutely slaughtered at work since then lonnie knows the feeling of getting slaughtered at work don't you lonnie a little Uh, bit a little bit (laughs) a little bit so um yeah, I've I've come back with a cold as well, so no, that, that's England. So I mean, it it's cool. It, it's going to be next month very quickly. Ten thousand volts I, again. It's going to be new Kiss related music. W- what else is going on? I think Paul's just announced that he's going to be doing uh, an art show in uh, Wentworth in Florida. Um, you find the details in the usual pay- places on that. He's also go- I think going on Tony Orlando's podcast tonight, right. which. Number one, I was like, Tony Orlando's still around, um, yeah. Yeah, is. W- which is kind of cool. But it, it's also, I think, Paul's first post, you know, Kiss as an active unit um, media parent. So that'll be interesting to tune in to, to see, number one, how he's enjoyed being home um, and being done with Kiss and where his mind is, is at. Uh, what else has there been? Have I missed anything else? No, uh, the, uh, Bruce comments, the, Bruce Bruce comments. the Bruce comments were good last week. What Bruce comments? Um, saying that the past lineups weren't recognized at the, at oh, the shit, yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised <laughs> he actually uh, said that. It was the first non-conformist comments by Bruce maybe ever, you know, <laughs> yes. which, which was interesting. So maybe there's more to come if and if there well, really is a memoir to come too. Maybe maybe we'll get a little maybe the possible Bruce memoir might be a little juicier than we originally thought it would be. Yeah, he pretty much echoed everybody, you know, the fans, uh, what the fans were thinking. And I think he's kind of a fan, of course, of his own era and the rest of the band. And uh, he felt that yeah, there was a there was a miss there. He did an extensive interview for the what's it called rock and roll experience Mike run yeah oh my uh, fun yeah. run mm, a lot of fun a, run. A, a great interview if if you have an hour to spare uh, i think he 
He mentioned, among other things, that he had some uh, finished songs ready to go, and uh, he talked about the difficulties of putting a band together to, together to play live because everyone in our, our is so busy. And uh, but uh, I think we'll see a tour in the not so distant future with Bruce. The question is, what kind of songs will he play? Will he go the route, you know, the 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 solo route, or will he do more like he did on the cruises where he incorporate 80s and early 90s Kiss? I don't know, but but it sure as hell is interesting. I think if people are going to go see Bruce, they're expecting to hear certain things that relate to Bruce and his tenure in Kiss. Yeah. So he's probably yeah. he's probably going to be restrained to a certain extent yeah. uh, that he's got to play kind of the obvious stuff to because if it's all obscure, his era, then you know. It's not going to be popular. One thing I do want to call Bruce out on this. Um, there was a post on Facebook this morning about problems with the Audio Dog LP. Apparently, the record company mm -hmm. went bust, and a lot of people were hung out to dry. So he's mm -hmm. taking ownership of a product that he's associated with that has problems, and is saying, "Hey, get in, in touch with me because he wants to try and make things as right as he's able to." So mm -hmm. you know, check out Bruce on Facebook mm -hmm. and see how the big boys handle problems with their product, yeah. uh, because he's taking he's taking ownership and being respectful, whether it. He's able to do anything. It's a whole different matter, but he's at least being upfront and honest, which is, you know what? With a, with a problem with the KISS product is a very KISS-related product is very refreshing. So, you know, that's just like thumbs up to Bruce. Oh, always yeah. classy, which is is really nice. Anyone got any new KISS shit this week? Ken? I, I, <laughs> I, I did. Well, I did, yes. A couple things. Uh one is a, a very good friend uh, had uh, sent me over a copy of the classic rock uh, magazine a new one that has the uh the interviews with gene and paul from the last uh you know show at madison square garden so and that's it. so it was, it was good a good little article and uh it's a good i think kind of a keepsake for down the road, they'll say, well, this is it. This was the end, um, kind of the bookend for KISS, at least touring. And there's Julian's that is a, disappears and reappears. And yeah, you know what? <laughs> Running up and down the motorways in, in England and seeing those in every single service station was really awesome. Cool. Again, I, there I am. There's my band on the magazine rack. Mm -hmm. And it is, and how cool is that? It's not like it's one of those put together commemorative money gouge ones. It's a proper rock magazine with Kiss on the cover. So that was extremely cool. I haven't had time to read it yet. So, um, you know, it is what it is at this juncture. So and and forth. my uh, other item is I ordered when they had that uh, those pop up shops and stuff, and then they put things back online. Uh, some of the stuff that was on the pop-up shops I, I looked at you know one item kind of stuck out to me on it <clears throat> excuse me i went ahead and you know bought it um and it was the uh scarf the, the scarf this thing here which is really it looks good That's i mean cool. really you know really nice uh so yeah it's it's actually really good material <laughs> surprisingly is it knitted or is it print? Oh, knitted in there. Um, yeah. Um, it's, is it? It's, I think it's a print. It's print. Yeah, I think some kind of print. Um, but no, I don't know. It seems like it's really well done. It's done by some company that does these things called Roughneck. Roughneck scarves. Um, and they're, yeah, they're nice and heavy. Um, not like those old ones back in the day, uh, where there is just like a thin piece of material. This is heavy, heavy weight kind of scarf. So yeah, it's really, really nice. So have that. So add to the collection. <laughs> yep. So last week you guys went solo without me. Thank you for a great episode because I enjoyed being able to kick back and, and listen to it. Um, stuff happened that made it impossible for me to join which 
was a little bit of a bummer, but then I realized how late Daniel really does stay up to join our four o'clock episodes. Mm. And I was actually like, screw that. I'm not staying up late to do a podcast. <laughs> I'm going to, I did that the last time I was in England, I, I stayed up until like midnight to do a, a show. And I was like, this sucks. Um, mm. Plus with all the driving that I was doing. So Daniel, bravo for all the times that you have joined us at four, because you're even further ahead than uh, the UK. So you really are nuts. Yeah, probably. All right. Should, <laughs> probably. should we get into this is the end of round two. So I think we've got I, I don't have the spreadsheet open for how many songs have already gone through. But like I mentioned, there are 19 songs left in here, which means there's going to be an oddity. And I'm not sure how that's going to play out because we clearly have an odd number of songs in this. Oh. For, okay. um, so we'll again we're just going to keep pulling songs out of the cup until there's only one left and that's going to be the winner and we know it's not going to be read my body so we are safe from that so <laughs> why, do, why don't we jump in and get going and right. get round two done and out of the way oh but before i do thank you to everyone who tuned in and listened to the 12 days of Christmas season or series three oh, of yeah. the uh dem of the song stories appreciate you giving me your time all right first up i just scroll all the way back on this one i no mark <laughs> is going up against <laughs> i'll fight hell to hold you <laughs> okay which It's kind of difficult. I'm not, okay, so I don't get to vote today because uh, otherwise mm -hmm. it'll be all numbers. All right, Daniel, I versus I'll fight hell to hold you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, well, you know, the problem with Crazy Nights for me has always been the production. I think there's a good song somewhere in, in that I'll fight hell to hold you, <clears throat> but uh, I really don't like the production on Crazy Nights. I have a hard time listening to it. On the other hand, The Elder, it's so, such an oddball of a record. This is the most Kiss-sounding song on that record, I think. Uh, however, I could do without the finger, what do you call it, finger? Snapping. Snapping, yeah. So uh, that mm. really takes it down quite a bit. It sounds so awful. I mean, it's so silly. What were they thinking? Ah, it's kind of a toss-up for me, but but I do like the the lyrics to I, and I do think it it could have been sort of a you know an anthem almost. But um, the sonics and the finger snapping, uh, it still beats the Crazy Night song for me. So I'll, I'll go I. All right, Lonnie. Um. I is really good. It's my favorite song on the elder, probably. It, you know, it's a good kiss anthem, you know, and it kind of fits right in with the mold. And I'll fight hell to hold you is really great too, actually. I after I bought um Crazy Nights and I was looking at the singles that were on that album, I was surprised that I'll fight hell to hold you hold you wasn't a single because it is one of the more um, I think it's one of the better tracks on, on the album, actually. Um, that being said, I'm still going to go with I as my pick, because I think it is just a it's a better Kiss song and just a better song in general. I mean, it's 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 you know, it has it has it has a lot of Kiss vibes to it with with being the anthem. So my pick is I. All right. Ken, you get the token vote now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you guys know what I'm going to pick. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I I've always liked I. Um, yes, it, yeah, it's it's like an anthem. It is yeah, it is an anthem. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I agree with Daniel about the, the the finger snapping part. They could have. I think I think the story is that uh, Ace mailed this solo uh, over to to Kiss, but it got lost in the mail. So <laughs> they went without a solo and just had uh, finger snaps. Now, I'm making that up, obviously. Um, don't take that for. <laughs> uh truth but uh yeah i is i wins for me um though the other one from crazy nights I'll, I'll fight hell to hold you it's probably one of the better songs on creatures i mean crazy nights um 
but having said that, I, I do like I a lot. So I win. Yeah. I is an anthem, you know, and it's a good for, for even its weaknesses with its wonky Elvis impersonation and finger snapping. Oh, uh, the, yeah. Paul Elvis. <laughs> um, I don't it, need no money. It, it's still a it's still a pretty good song and and it's really fun on uh what's it on Fridays. So yeah, you know, I, I would be going with I as well, but I'll fight hell to hold you. That is the song that inspired me to do the Crazy Nights book. Because okay. when mm. I found that cover version of it, I can't even remember who it is now, who um transformed it into a disco song. I was like, holy oh. shit, this is a this is a really um this is actually a really good song. And then I listened to I'll Fight Hell to Hold You down tuned a half step. So mm -hmm. taking Paul's vocals away from you know only audible by dogs and focused <laughs> on the guitar work and the musicianship. It was it was enough to rethink that, but it doesn't come anywhere near beating eye. All right. Oh God, the eye video. Yeah, that's yeah. It's up on on the fans' shoulders at the end, bouncing around. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If ever a song was completely dated. All right, here we go. Where's Mark? Detroit Rock City. Mm. Oh, Detroit Rock City. <laughs> this has Detroit has to be a contender to go all the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. but. One would think I don't, I'm not sure, too sure. I remember Ken not having it in, in his top 20 kiss songs a while back. That's true, that's very true. You remember, <laughs> right? Okay, so, yeah. remember. There, there's the some 20. hatred for Detroit Rock City out there, yeah. Mark. yeah. Top 20. <laughs> well, I had a lot well, of deep cuts, I think. I think it's gonna remain on Ken's list today because it's going up against Rain. Oh. Mm. <laughs> And for new <laughs> listeners to the show, Rain was released on an album called Carnival of Souls in 1997. You may not have it in your collection. Lonnie, let's start with you. Detroit, Rock City, or Rain? And I'm sorry uh, for insulting you by even asking. It, you know, Rain is is different. Uh, <laughs> it's different. Not, exact, not exactly a kiss vibe to it. Um, but come on, it's Detroit, Rock City. It's maybe... It, it it may end up being the winner. I mean, it 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 may end up, end up being in the finals or at minimum the final four. I would imagine. So that's a that's a, one of the easier picks I think we'll have. This Detroit Rex City. All right, Daniel. Actually, oh, sorry, you... uh, let let me go to Ken first because he didn't get uh, a vote that counted last time. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yeah, Rain is. Um, Make your voice heard, the... Ken. <laughs> yeah, Rain is the probably the dreariest Kiss song of all so Kiss songs, in in my opinion. I just never liked that song. Um, boy, that's not very good. So, Detroit Rock City is a well, any almost any other song would beat Rain, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, but Detroit Detroit Rock City is obviously a classic and is uh, is the winner for me. All right, Daniel. Pay no attention to the man behind that curtain. Anyway, <laughs> I was looking for a, for a book, but it wasn't there. And the the fourth book from from Colin Eos and uh, the other guy, uh, Alex. Uh, Alex, yeah, Bergdahl. Uh, actually, Carl, I think he wrote something that really stayed with me in that book. It was released last year, uh, and he said Paul had trouble. Uh, singing over riffs you know and this is a typical a great example of that you know that column of the soul song kind of a cool riff but uh, it really doesn't work with the paul vocals paul needs you know chords breathing when he sings in order to get his his uh, vocals going and this is a perfect example of that you know he has problems creating great songs with riffs on on the verses and this is one of them so you know detroit rock city moves on to the next round yeah unfortunately some of these matchups are they seem stupid but they're they're just what's coming out so yeah it's just that's random 
that's the whole it's random of this yep. just get to talk with <laughs> it's like pot of thunder except they did episodes about kiss songs we're just you know like doing that. Ours, i like ours. i like that <laughs> Yeah, and you can good... still go back and listen to Pot of Thunder's episodes. I mean, it's timeless, actually. So they're out there. Yeah. Yep. That's the great thing about their format. All right. Next up. You love me to hate you. Uh-huh. Versus Love Gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's even there worse. <clears throat> there we go again. <laughs> Oh my lord! Here we go again. Oh, okay. Um, do we need to go around the table? Ken, get us started. Okay. Uh, you love me to hate you is a song that I just. That's one of the songs off of uh, Hot in the Shade that just ah, you know, grates on me, man. I just, I can't, I just, I just don't like it. I never liked that one really. Um, so, um, <laughs> Love Gun. <laughs> An easy winner for me. Um, classic, great song. Plays every, you know, they played it at every concert. I mean, for years and years and years. So, easy win. Okay, let me just double check with you whether you're sure. Uh, your, your vote is final. What? Well, okay, yeah, left guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah, you know, kind of cool. Paul's two favorite songs come up here. Detroit Rock City and Love Gone. He always mm. mentioned those when he when he's uh, put on the spot to 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 name his favorite song and and you know Love Gun is so timeless, great song. You know the drums on the chorus, oh, I love it. Uh, the other one not so much. Uh, so Love Gun. Yeah. Okay, Lonnie. You you could be yeah. different now. You can vote your truth. Well. I think I need to go back and listen to find what the hell I love you to hate you went up against to make it into round number two. But then again, there's so many songs on I Hot in the it. Shade. There's so many songs on Hot in the Shade. It may have just been a leftover and just got forced in the round two. Because yeah. I can't imagine what song it beat to get into round number two. Because shit. It's not that heavy. I, I can't imagine what song was worse that we said, oh, yeah, we're moving. I love you to hate you on. So um, it's a slam dunk pick again with Love Gun. We need better matchups. This is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Two of the worst matchup of the whole Deathmatch series here. We're all agreeing every time around, yeah. the, more, around the bat here. Let's see. There's no give, debate. Me, give me a second here. And I might be able to tell you. Okay. Uh, all right, I found it. Hmm? Now let's see if Microsoft lets me open the fucking file. Microsoft, you <laughs> suck. <laughs> I need to Got check the, your license before opening your file for you. Yes, you check the your license. Pay five more dollars first before you open. Yeah. Okay, you love me to hate you. Um, where is it? Oh, actually beat Seduction of the Innocent. Huh. Oh, so, that's I, I know I didn't vote for I, I voted for Seduction of Innocent for sure. I know. I'm sure it's a I Gene love, song. I love that song. <laughs> Gene song? I love that song. Well, there oh, we yeah, go. But to me it's you, guys, you guys asked me why it's there. So there we go. Uh, All right. Yeah. Go, going, coming up next it's going to be there's a lot of Carnival of Souls and um, Hot in the Shade songs on this because it is obviously those albums have a lot of songs on them. Mm-hmm. So we've got Hide Your Heart. Yeah, that's that's a good song. Hide Your Heart. Mm-hmm. Watching you. Mm. Watching Hide you. Your Heart versus Watching You. Now, to be <laughs> fair, Hide Your Heart is a Kiss classic. He was playing on the left tour, but what it was actually, yeah, parts classic. Um, and watching you was not. Therefore, by that logic, Daniel, get us started. Watching you or hide your heart. I do like both songs. Um, I really like the live version on Detroit 1990 of "Hide Your Heart" when it was fresh. Uh, Really great, worked great live. Um, but against watching you, uh, I don't, I don't see it going 
through to the next round. Watching you is uh, one of the cooler songs. I think one of the coolest lyrics when it comes to a Kiss song. So creepy. <laughs> Such a creepy song. And, uh, you know, that that riff. I love that riff. And it was great on a live. And it was really cool on a live three as well. So uh, watching you might go through a few more rounds, I think. So my vote goes to watching you. Lonnie. Yeah. Um, Hide Your Heart's good. It, you know, it's it's maybe one of the better, if not the best track off of Hot Shades. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, catchy. It's fun. It's fun when they do it live. And, you know, they, they still were doing it live on the on the last tour but watching you is I, is so good and I've, you know i've gotten to, to see him do it live a few times um and it works so good live it's so groovy like like daniel was saying it, it's just it sounds so good live it sounds so good on a live one and a live three um very different versions of it but both very very good strong versions on both those albums so as much as I like Hide Your Heart, I mean, if Hide Your Heart would have went up against some of these other ones that we've had the, you know, love me to hate you or something like that, it would be moving on. But it's it's definitely watching you in this matchup. Yeah, well, you know, if you get knocked out, it's best to get knocked out by a better song rather than have some crap sandwich of a matchup, right? So, Ken. Yeah, even though I saw um, that song... Um... What's wrong with my <laughs> watching you versus not watching you, but the uh, the other one? Hide your one. heart. Why am I blanking it now? That's it. Right. Rise, your... rise your heart. Hide your um, rise geez, your heart. Rise your heart. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I saw that when Paul Stanley uh, on the solo tour before Hot in the Shade came out, um, which was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is great. You know, uh, I think it it's better live, um, but. Uh, Anyway, yeah, watching you is is a, a great classic Kiss song that I've always loved um, since I first heard it. So that wins for me. But Ken, that's really interesting. Did you you went to the Paul Stanley Souls or in eighty nine? I did. And yeah, I did. What? How did you? Uh, what did you think when he played that song? Did you did you have any idea what it was? No, no, no. It, was, it was a brand new song, and uh, so cool. I was like, oh, this is pretty pretty good song so it's, yeah you know, I, was, I was excited about it um, so you liked it off the bat i did like it yeah um, i liked it the way they they well, the way they performed it there um i think it was it's again it's it was it's better live than yeah. on record for me at least agreed yeah watching you especially the 73 demo version it's oh, yeah. uh, That's a, a very good. menacing yeah dark song it's very cool it's got a great great attitude great riff uh my guitar was nearby I'd be reaching for it it's one of those really fun riffs to play uh but hide your heart's a fantastic song yeah. uh, absolutely fantastic well song. so it, it, it would be a tough one to put those two up against each other and but it has to be watching you since that's right at the beginning of the band's history for me all right next up in your face mm-hmm up against it's gonna be another trouncing is it rocket Maybe. ride another yeah. unanimous yeah, well decision yeah. come on what is that? come on now. <laughs> oh my lord so bad ride. bad matchups okay <laughs> lonnie get us started ace versus ace we don't get these matchups no um it doesn't work out that way very often but um in your face while well, it's it's so forced and it's gene writing the song to ace saying this is what an ace fraley song should sound like <laughs> well rocket ride is what an ace fraley song is should sound like and everything what an ace fraley song should be about um rocket ride is one of one of the lost gems really in the kiss catalog and, and uh, really a shame that it never got the a lot of the love it deserved because it was never performed live by the band and I thought I really thought like when they came back in 96 that that, that was a song that could they did it on that medley you know in 2001 oh Gene, Gene didn't like it <laughs> yeah Gene didn't like it yeah there you go enough said right there 
But, um, you know, I think Rocket Ride's so good, and it's just, you know, just buried by the band. But it, up against In Your Face, come on. It's not, it's not even a, again, it's not even a contest today. It's Rocket Ride for sure. All right. Uh, Ken. Yeah, In Your Face is kind of a filler, I guess you could call it. Hell yeah. Um, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not great. It's just okay. Um, it really doesn't do much for me at all. You know, it never has. So, uh, but Rock and Ride is just a great, one of Ace's greatest songs um, that he's written, in my opinion. Um, <coughs> so that one's an easy win for me. Rocket Ride. Hi, right, Daniel. I remember an episode we did called The Ultimate Ace, where we... Uh, mm. Uh, try to find out which what which was the best a song i do remember i think rocket ride was in the top three i think it ended up in first or second place so mm -hmm. we all enjoy it and um, it's all about the riff in rocket ride it's such a cool riff and I, 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 I thought it was kind of a i would have liked to see it on a studio album i mean if they could have saved an all-american man and rocket ride for a studio album because that fourth side on alive 2 i mean it's uh, kind of a throwaway to put those great songs there i always thought that alive 2 should be live all the way through and you could have saved those two songs for the next record i mean two great songs that ah didn't get enough love i think uh, and both All American Man and, and uh, I think All American Man is one of the coolest riffs as well, even though it's a you know sort of a tip of the hat to to burn by Deep Purple. But uh, Rocket Ride is such a cool riff, so we need to put Rocket Ride through to the next round. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to believe that he brought in Rocket Ride and Shock, uh, Shock Me at the same time. He wanted yeah. to do Rocket Ride for Love Gun, Ooh. but the other yeah. band members wanted to do shock me and he was surprised because mm. he liked rocket ride better than shock me uh, both, yeah both are great go figure so rocket ride only gets used later yeah. in that year because it was the other song that he had brought into the sessions and you know this time rocket ride was too good yeah this time he, he got his way and it was yeah. actually i think uh the last top 40 single issued by kiss in the originals era i'd have to fact check mm. that but i think i think that off the top of the head um, yeah, and we, you know. we couldn't possibly put two ace tracks on love gun we had the squeeze then she kissed me on there as opposed to yeah they could have put two ace songs, songs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. it doesn't make any sense does it yeah good point mm. <laughs> there we go possibly. another freaking carnival of song soul songs i will be there <laughs> Uh, mm. versus <laughs> coming home. Oh. This is Ken. Can you start us off with this child abuse? <clears throat> I like I Will Be There. Um, that's a really good song. Nice song. Um, that's well done. And uh, it's one of my, it's probably my second favorite Paul song on Carnival of Souls um after jungle um uh, it's really really good but yeah coming home is a really kind of a deep cut song but it's it's really good i mean it's brought back to life during unplugged um era um and but it's really good it's just classic kiss classic sound uh coming home wins for me daniel what about for you the well it, it would have been easy if it was the unplugged version of coming home i think that's the far easier superior, uh, yeah, yeah far far that's superior true. version of coming home sure. but now you know we're, we're doing the studio versions and um, i do think it lacks on 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 on, on, on the studio version uh, i really don't go back and listen a lot to it but you know, against that ballad, I think I think it's a kind of a cool ballad. I think he wrote it for his son, uh, uh, and he. I, I remember early interviews from the Revenge era where, where he um, said that it reminded him of 
the Rolling Stone song uh, "Wild Horses." Mm. That might be a stretch, but uh, um, it's still mm-hmm. a cool song. I, I think it's a good ballad, but I have to go with "Coming Home" anyway. Yeah, it's a really good ballad. Yeah. Fantastic song, well crafted, well executed. Yep. It's mm-hmm. one of the better songs on Carnival of Souls. Yeah. And co- coming home, you know, for me is one of the better songs on Hotter Than Hell, where it's where that production really sounds great with those big fat chords. It sounds great mm-hmm. musically, um, with all the problems. Lonnie, what's your um, yeah, it's you know two very different songs from kind of kind of bookend type from the band it's from you know beginning to close close to the end or later albums but um i will be there it's good it's fine but coming home is and i know we you know we mentioned the coming home like the the go-to version of coming home is is mtv unplugged but um it's still good on but it's still good on on higher than hell I, i still enjoy it um and i enjoy it more than then I will be there at the end of the day. There we have it. All right. I will be there. Sorry, Paul. Great song. It's nothing personal. <laughs> but we got to go with the one that Ace Frehley co-wrote. <laughs> Even if he doesn't know what he contributed to it. <laughs> he doesn't remember yet. No. All right. Here we go. Please not have another fucking carnival song. <laughs> we have a box set song. Don't mm. you hesitate. Oh. That is mm. a hell of a deep cut. Yeah. It's going up against arthritis. Oh, it's going up against another deep cut. Reputation really? off the uh, oh, wow. Love Gun Deluxe Edition. So that's, <sighs> a, that's a weird one. 75 versus 77. <laughs> Or 76, mm. or who knows with Gene. That could be anything. All right, Daniel, start us off with those. I remember that. I, I remember when Smoke came, came you know, uh, yeah. uh, surfaced. Uh, and Don't You Hesitate is another version of Smoke, I think. Yeah, it's m- much of the same chords, and, uh, and uh, it's almost the same song. I do prefer Smoke over Don't You Hesitate, but I think Don't You Hesitate is a better song than that Gene Crap. So I'll have to go with uh, with Don't You Hesitate. Then I better go to Ken next, since someone's just thrown some butt at Gene. <laughs> Don't You Hesitate versus Reputation. What do you think? Uh, that's, hot. that's a tough one. I mean, they're both similar uh, in a way. Um, how you know, un- the, you know, both unfinished kind of songs. Um, I'm gonna go with Reputation because oh. you know I'm a Gene guy. I, I, is this the first song I, that I isn't it. unanimous? I think this is the first one that isn't <laughs> unanimous. Maybe yeah, uh, I have to do that just to make it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> make it you know uh, a cliffhanger so uh, yeah. Lonnie can decide the hmm? the ending of this. Oh song. no, Lonnie. We no, don't no, no. We, we got a tie. <clears throat> he couldn't do it. He had to leave. He, <laughs> he like it's like it was too much for him. He didn't want to break uh, anyone's hearts, so he, no. He said, "I'm, I'm out of here." <laughs> or right. his wife turned on a Netflix. Anyway, well, um, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a minute to get Lonnie back here because Ken, tell me one lyric line from Reputation. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't even give you a uh, don't, don't you hesitate line either. That's what, that's how much I listen to those two songs. Um, so uh, sometimes I, I can't. I can't tell you the full line. Full. Yeah, no, I it's yeah, been a while with, since with, I listened with, to it. With Change. with all the, all the versions of Reputation that have kind of surfaced. There's a lot. Yeah, there, there's a lot. I like the uh, the later one much more than the syrupy. I don't even know if that's actually Love Gun era. It it, it doesn't sound right. Oh, I now, you're, now you're in trouble, Ken. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. 
<laughs> All right. I I'm gonna hold that one open and we'll we'll get Vonnie too early in the morning for Vonnie's morning. vote on that um as soon as he sorts out his technical issues. But for now, let's get go on with the, the next one. <laughs> because Lonnie's gonna break that tie. Let's see. I see it tries to log on, but there seems to be a problem. There's yeah. a blank Lonnie there. Yeah. Windows applying updates now. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't do it. That's all right. Yeah. Let's give, give it. Okay, so next up, Heart of Chrome versus Down on Your Knees. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think I know what about. And we were going to start with Lonnie on that one, but we'll uh, start with Daniel. He disappeared again. Heart of Chrome, a, co a song Vinny Vincent co-wrote. Um, I do know Lonnie likes that song. Uh, for me, <laughs> it was never one of the favorites off of uh, Revenge. Um, um, I, I like the riff. ba da ba da ba da ba ba kind of a cool riff but once again one of the Paul Stanley songs where he tries to sing over a distinctive riff and it, to, for me it just doesn't work uh, and I like all the songs of Killer, all, Killers all the new songs uh, mm. and this was was this Down on Your Knees which one was it? Yeah, down on your knees. Down on your knees. Down maybe knees. one of maybe not the strongest songs on on Kiss Killers. Um, but I do like the vibe. I like Paul vocal Paul's vocals on, on that record. And um, now he's back. Lon is back. So I think I'll give uh, a shout out to the Killers song "Down on Your Knees," even though the other one. It's kind of a cool song. I, I still prefer the killer song. All right. So, Lonnie, go, looping back to you, don't <laughs> you hesitate or reputation. You're going to break the tie. Oh, no. <laughs> he can't hear anything. Do you hear us, Lonnie? And he, looks all, <laughs> he, looks all, he looks all. He looks very grumpy and sad as well. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. It's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. All right. So. Oh, Otherwise, you'll have right, to take his place, still, Julian. Still a tie. Nope. No, we'll, we'll, we'll have him. It'll be our first tie. His, we'll have a message in his votes um, if necessary. So, Ken, Heart of Chrome, down on your knees. Yeah, I'm with Daniel. Um, mm. Heart of Chrome's pretty good, but uh, yeah. down on your knees was uh, very cool to have uh, when Killers came out and those four songs, new songs. Um, even though I think it's not. The production that it could have been, you know, with uh, that would have been, you know, creatures, um, but it was still good enough and a, a cool, different kind of song uh, from Paul um, that doesn't <laughs> doesn't sound like normal Paul, um, but it's, it's still really good. I really enjoy it. Down on your knees, market. <laughs> Julian, how much time passed between the Elder and Killers? Is it a full year, or no? Because they, they started recording Killers in uh, February '82, and October was the Elder released in October or something like that. Elder came out in November. November, yeah. Yep. So, so it's really mind-boggling. He could come up with so many great songs, Paul in such a short amount of time but i guess he had the ideas for the elder but they were scrapped oh no lon is voting for lonnie has voted for, for... reputation reputation yes wow. that was I, I... wow I, I didn't see that one coming no i didn't see that one coming either. i didn't either hmm. <laughs> uh daniel well i amazing uh, what, what, what was daniel saying <laughs> I don't know. Right, Meanwhile, right. I'm going to do homework and listen to Reputation again and, uh, later today. <laughs> Down right, on so your knees are going through because both of us <coughs> voted for that one. Well, you don't. Let's not tell him that. <coughs> okay. Well, yeah, let's make it a surprise. Keep it a secret. Right. 
So while I wait for Alani to get back to me with that message, um, let me just put these ones to the side, move on to the next. All right, there's only three songs left in the hat, so this is going to be the last round. And we'll see which one's getting thrown into Boomerang versus... <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh. Versus Mad Dog. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what the hell? <laughs> this is like the worst death match episode Mad we've ever Dog done. And <laughs> Boomerang. Ken, get us started with that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Boomerang oh. is kind of a, a, one of those throwaways. Um. <laughs> Big time. Uh, it just doesn't. It doesn't really work, and it's kind of just forgotten if you don't, until someone brings it up. You know, like, oh yeah, boomerang. I remember that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, <laughs> even though it's unfinished, it had potential. It's kind of you know, not great, but it's better. It's still better than boomerang. I'm gonna. <laughs> For me, at least, um, and I, of course, the gene thing. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Mad Dog. All right, give me one second to get recentered here. All right, finishing up the last round, Lonnie, Heart of Chrome, or Down on Your Knees? Um, Down on Your Knees. Oh, right. uh, why? Wow, you, did, you didn't go for the revenge song. <laughs> Surprising, yeah. I did not. Um. I don't know. I do like Down on Your Knees. It's a good song. Yeah. But I do like Heart of Chrome, too. But <laughs> um, I know it's a shock, but sometimes... Yeah, that was shocker. shocker. It wouldn't have mattered anyway, hard... but, you know. It doesn't matter anyway. Heart of Chrome moves on. No, no. Down on Your Knees. Oh, Down on Your Knees moves on. If you would have went Heart of Chrome, it, it wouldn't have mattered. It's, it's a good song. Um, I, yeah. I, I do like Heart of Chrome, and I know it's a shocker, but, you know, I can't... I, you know, I can't be that guy that I'm just going to pick every revenge song, no matter what it goes up against, though. Either so. Oh. Well, I was good. I was going to pick "Heart of Chrome," and if Mark oh, was there, you? yeah, "Heart of Chrome." I love that. From the moment I, I heard too. that song on the album, I'm like, this is really cool. Because you have to remember, I, I don't care for "Unholy." "Heart of Chrome" was the sort of stuff I wanted mm. to hear. So, mm. all right, mm. down on your knees, moves on. We've started the next round, which was uh, "Boomerang" versus "Mad Dog." Lonnie, I'm going to get your vote next, just in case your wires get frozen again. Yeah. In case. <laughs> um, down on your knee, boomerang or mad dog? <laughs> oh, that's rough, man. Bottom of the barrel. That Cholera or anthrax? Which do you prefer? <laughs> I guess I'm going to go. I guess I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to go mad dog because. It has more of a Kiss classic vibe to it. You can hear, you know, structures of of things to come. So that being in Boomerang, it's just man, that, that's filler of filler of filler at the end of oh yeah of, of a not so great album. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to go Mad Dog. I had to talk myself into it. But I'm going to go Mad Dog. Yeah, boom, Boomerang is like Kiss trying to do thrash. And not doing it very well, Daniel. To have yes, to Andy. choose, to have to choose between two evils. I don't know. Uh, both of these songs are bottom of the barrel for me. <clears throat> but I think I'll give the nod to Mad Dog since there's really no excuse to put a song like Boomerang on an album. At least Mad Dog might have some potential. It could have worked out in the end, and um, but Boomerang is such a train wreck. Um, I still remember listening to Hard in the Shade the first time and thinking, what the heck is this? <laughs> sort of a bastard child to no, 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 but much worse. <laughs> and uh, so, Mad Dog. All right, yeah. I would have been Mad Dog. Boomerang is just everything that's wrong with Hot in the Shade. That there is songs mm -hmm. on there that really should have been left on the cutting room floor or yeah. mm -hmm. edit them out. All right, yeah. which means that this the token song that goes through to the next round without having to face any opposition. Lonnie will be happy with this. A revenge song. Take it off. Nice. That's, that's a good one. 
I think it deserves to go through as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. That is the end of round two. So we have thinned the herd down by by half again. So in the next death match, we'll be starting round three, and I need to do do the math to make sure everything's still kind of adding up. And I'll, Julian uh, math. Well, no, I'll, I'll post up a list of all the songs that have been eliminated in round two, just so people can see, you know, where where this is going. And some of the great, great Kiss songs that we all love have already lost out. I mean, that's just the weight because they met someone who was bigger and stronger and angrier. Um, so, yeah, that is it for this week. Well, that is what? Is that that's the shortest, shortest episode ever. What? Yeah, I didn't make it. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. we're I not gonna know. we're not gonna add in any filler to stretch it out to an hour and a half <laughs> just for the sake of having a ninety minute episode. I got shit to do. I got a book to. I got to finish Aerosmith <laughs> Volume Two this year. Work on your book. Yeah. yeah, and then I've got War Machine sitting. It's it's sitting in the corner thinking whether it wants to exist or not. But what do you mean, War Machine? War Machine, 1982 to 84, in a format like Mass Hysteria, dedicated. Of course, to it wants it, to exist. It needs to, be, it, needs, yes. it needs to be done, Julian. That's a no-brainer. It's slacking. Let's go. Uh, it may need to be done. I don't know if I can do it. Or yes, no you can. Yes, it's you can. And yes, you will. A great uh, addition to the. Uh, um, what do you want to call it? To the companion to Creature of the Night box set. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. We, shall, we we shall see. Again, you know, I I showed it to one person in New York where it sat. You know, it's like 150 pages or something right now. Okay, and and they freaked out at it, but there are a lot of pages that are blank. And <laughs> as I know from the challenges with mass hysteria, mm -hmm. you know, it's very tough to try and fill in those pages with mm. stuff that is actually has a reason to be used rather than just being thrown on there and being, mm. you know, again, I'm not going to put out garbage. No, but you put in a lot of effort in, in the last one where you, uh, you got help from all over the world. So you just need to put out the word and people will step up. And give you the things you need. Yeah, we, we shall see if that happens. So, all right, it will. that's it. That'll be it for now. So, from Lonnie, Ken, Daniel, and myself, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the Kiss FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.